Gideon, please start the presentation. Okay, thank you very much for attending. Okay, so I'm going to talk about Stereo Assist, which is um, a top-down stereo system for driver assistance, which is sort of complementary to the classic bottom-up system, which uh, we've seen quite a few presentations already this, uh, this conference. So the talk outline, I'll basically discuss a bit about classic stereo, some of the problems which you encounter in bad weather and in clutter scenes. The system works very well in good weather and isolated targets. Um, then we'll introduce the, just review the monocular detection systems and then go into the heart of stereo assist. What it is, some example configurations, some sequ image sequences showing you the system in action. Um, the, syst the topic of calibration of the system is addressed in the paper. I don't have time to, I won't cover it now. Lack of time, please come and ask me questions afterwards if you um, are interested. And then we'll summarize and then go to some future work um, discussion. So the classic stereo system, uh, you rectify the images. Uh, you then scan along the um, epipolar lines, which are now typically horizontal in the image, to make an efficient scanning. Uh, you create a depth map. And then you cluster the depth of the map and locate the interesting objects. This has been already addressed already by uh, Frank and Jews in uh, IV2000. More recent uh, work on um, SGM and subpixel accuracy have been addressed by Hirschmuller and uh, a paper by Gehrig and Franke in uh, ICCV2007. Some really good uh, depth maps they can produce considerably better than what I demonstrate here. Okay, this system works very well in close and medium range targets and in decent weather conditions. Uh, it can give depth maps on general targets, which is a great advantage. The disadvantages is that it'll fail, it fails in bad weather conditions. It has difficulty in cluttered scenes. And another error problem is that the range error grows quadratically with the distance. So if we, for example, double the sensor resolution, now we're moving from VGA sensors in the automotive industry to one megapixel sensors, we don't get a doubling in the range. So here's a classic stereo uh, scenario in the rain. What we have here uh, are reflections from the road. And as you can see, because these reflections will appear, um, at the distance of the vehicle which has created those reflections. That's what the geometry gives us. So we get a mess in the depth map. Instead of having a flat road, we'll end up with holes in the road. Um, this is another scenario. Here we have heavy rain. The windshield wiper cannot consistently keep the, the windshields clean. It has a very hard job keeping both cameras clear at the same time. And you notice a couple of different problems. One is this post here actually is, seems to be split over there, while in the right-hand image you can see it's actually straight like it should be. The cons in consequence, the depth map actually shows two different depths on the same post. Uh, the other problem is that, for example, the lights on this car appear very different in shape to the lights in that car, making it very difficult to do pixel-wise alignment. Um, so the second issue is the issue of cluttered scenes. If I'm just interested, in, let's say, in this scenario of knowing is there something there, stereo, classic stereo, bottom-up stereo would do very nicely. But I'm actually perhaps particularly interested in the fact that there's a person there. And that is much harder to detect from a depth map which doesn't, act contact, doesn't have the resolution to look at the particular features in the scene. We'll go through a numerical example. Uh, consider, let's say, a classic production camera, wide VGA, 40-degree uh, field of view, giving a focal length of about 950. This is what we use in our aftermarket systems. And let's say a modest baseline of 15 centimeters. Things scale linearly in many cases here. Uh, the woman in this case is at 33 meters. If we look at the error due to, let's say, one pixel error in disparity map, we find out that there, the depth error around that, the error margin is around six meters. That means we'll never be able to tell the difference between the pedestrian, the woman there, and the background. We're sort of even further hampered by the fact that these are specular surfaces. They're sort of reflective. So even the depth map on the building itself will be very noisy. 
Okay, so what we bring into play here is monocular object detection. Uh, this is an example of vehicle detection, uh, pedestrian detection. Uh, this will just show some motorcycles as well. Um, these systems have been in production now for, uh, since 2007 um, in the Volvo, for example, uh, aftermarket systems. Um, the detection range in monocular vision is just simply a image, question of image or resolution. So if I want to, currently I have 100 meters detection range in uh, vehicles, 50 meters on pedestrians. I double the sensor resolution. I can close to double the um, detection range. Um, one of the problems is that, although it does mark here the distances to the targets, these are just estimates based on various heuristics and geometry. For in, in particular, we, we know these targets on the ground plane, and we apply the ground plane constraint. Typically, we get within about 10 percent in most scenarios. So this brings us to stereo sets. Let's use the monocular system to help the stereo system in certain situations. For example, uh, this is a scene left. We have two cameras, which we'll call a primary camera and a secondary camera. What we notice here is that because of some snow, this was a very slushy day. There was a lot of heavy snow falling, like not a heavy snowstorm, but the, drop, the flakes were very heavy. They were sitting on the windshield. And in certain situations, part of the image is okay, but part of it is uh, distorted. Um, so what we do here is uh, we apply monocular detection to one of the images, to the primary camera. And then what we do is we detect, al um, align those particular targets using the whole rectangle which we've cropped out of the image and align them with images in the secondary target. Now, this is a particular scenario where the cameras are not side by side. In this case, I've mounted, this is the typical location for a monocular system. I just stuck another camera in a convenient location. Here it's down over the dashboard. Um, it's out inside the wiper zone, which is uh, important. And uh, we now have a vertical disparity, which is me means that here in the alignment, good alignment means that the heights of the vehicle are aligned well. And we see that we get good alignment. Um, if we look at a, another example, uh, here I've actually taken the primary camera, typically at the same location. The secondary camera here is mounted on the tip of the rear view mirror. Here's another example. That's where it is. So in fact, it's actually not even protected from reflections from the dashboard. We just stuck it there. And we get the primary camera, the secondary one. Primary camera, we detect the three pedestrians. We do the alignment so we can get um, stereo depth on them. And one of the things to notice is that there are certain reflections here from the dashboard in the one camera, not in this one, because this one has a protective glare shield. And also there are re reflections from the ground plane. These don't disturb this um, technology. So just an overview again of what the system is. We perform object detection using the monocular image. We compute the disparity only of the detected objects. And for the distant targets, this disparity can now give us some target verification that, in fact, there is something there. It's not the monocular system imagining something. And for the closer targets, um, we can actually get improved depth range from the stereo because it's an actual depth measuring system. Uh, so the advantages is it's very computationally efficient. There's very little add-on computation from the monocular system, which already runs in real time, because we only match a few particular um, rectangles in the image. Uh, this means that when we do this matching, we can use very expensive cost functions, uh, rather than have to do simple sum of absolute differences or simple cost functions like that. Um, it also means that we can allow for distortions in the geometry as we scan to try to find the match. Again, because we're only doing it at a few rectangles in the image. Typically, you have up to about uh, 10 targets, which are, could be of interest. It's a modular system in that uh, you have a car manufacturer might have a single camera in the car, one model, and then they say, OK, now we want to uh, add extra features 
beyond, for example, the NHTSA FCW LDW, which is already covered, but we want to add extra functionality, we stick another camera in somewhere, and this camera could be anywhere in the car. And it's robust because even if one of the cameras is blocked, we still have a functioning system, at, at least at the monocular level. The disadvantage, and this is quite significant, is that it works only for specific classes. So we can detect vehicles, bikes, pedestrians, lampposts, traffic signs, but they have to be well defined. When we work in this, we can, again, think of, just in terms of geometry, we can think of three different zones. Uh, one zone is where we actually have range. Here I'm assuming one pixel accuracy and uh, disparity. So if you want to get at least 10% accuracy and range, we need a disparity of 10 pixels. But to do the verification, disparity of 4 pixels is sufficient. And in some cases, we won't be able to get any useful disparity at all. And this is what we call the monocular zone. Um, in back to our example here, the pedestrian is at um, 33 meters um, and therefore is well within the disparity zone of um, the system, the verification of the system. Again, we probably wouldn't be able to get a uh, much improved depth estimate in this case. Here we have a second uh, configuration where we actually st we have the primary camera up there, we have a secondary camera mounted in the, in the grill. Um, this is sort of uh, simulates the um, all-around view cameras in the Nissan, or you could think of this as a far infrared camera um, in uh, some of the night vision systems, which have to be mounted outside the vehicle. Uh, here we have a very big baseline um, in the this is just a mock-up, it's actually a Toyota, but in the Ford Fusion we used, this gave a baseline of 0.6 meters, which is considerable. And of course you see it doesn't really look big, it doesn't block the eyesight too much. Um, and we detect with the upper camera, detect this pedestrian, look and, be a, and simply align it in the wide field of view camera to get improved uh, performance. Uh, in, this scenario, in this scenario, because of the wide baseline, even though this is actually a very wide angle camera, it's only a 640 pixel resolution uh, focal length, we actually get quite a large stereo range for stereo range. Mon the verification is considerably, actually, theoretically, which is about 90 meters, and that's about the limit of what our monocular system can do with this resolution. Um, but let's see some examples of this in image sequences, since we like video. Here I'm uh, resorting, I'm using a, a typical side-by-side -side, uh, configuration. This allows us to um, compare results also with uh, classic stereo systems. And uh, just what we're going to, when we look at these images, this is the primary camera image. I've marked out the targets which were detected, and one of the targets is marked in red. This is typically the in-path vehicle. Uh, when they're pedestrian sequences, I've overridden that and uh, I display the pedestrian. And this is the, then I've aligned that target with the, um, in the secondary camera. Uh, it's hard to see, the red is where the original image was, and then the yellow is the aligned disparity. Um, this shows the alignment, and here I'm displaying one of the images in red, one of them in green. When they're well aligned, you get a sort of a yellow, gray, sort of monoc monochrome image. This part here is not aligned, so you see red and green separate. Okay, so this shows good alignment. Um, this is the alignment score. Um, I'm using um, normalized correlation in my uh, alignment score here. One means good, zero means bad. Um, and this shows the um, stereo range in red. I've marked them in individual pixels so we can see when there are discontinuities. And the green line here is the monocular distance estimates. So, oh, we had in zoom. Okay, so here we see it again, and this is a sequence in action. Okay, this is a rainy day sequence. We detect the vehicles, and we get alignment of the CIPV, and uh, we're starting to get stereo disparity scores uh, measurements. Um, now here I'm just showing raw uh, disparity on a per frame basis. There's no attempt at the future work section will show we'll try to do fusion between the monocular and stereo 
and based on, among other things, the alignment score we get. Here's just another example. Um, this is a very heavy rain. You notice severe geometric distortions on the windshield due to the water presence on the windshield. The windshield wipe is working as fast as it can. I admit it's a 2001 Buick. It's not the highest end and most modern of vehicles, but this is what it's managing to do. Um, this is where I got that lamppost which broke in uh, the static images. Okay, so again, the monocular dis because we have monocular detection, we can typically align these two images, at least on the interesting targets. Okay, I'm running out of time, but this is just a pedestrian sequence. Uh, the pedestrians are detected, they're aligned. When there's no pedestrians, it shows you the truck. Now you have a pedestrian. Yes. Okay, and the pedestrians are walking very fast because it's raining quite hard. Okay, so what we have is two complementary technologies. There's the classic stereo, which does dense alignment, uh, very simple features, dense alignment. It's good for general objects. We have the stereo assist coming from the other side. With, uh, it's for specific objects, but that gives us long range, robust to bad weather, and works better in um, cluttered scenes. It's not great for general objects, which, I haven't, which we've never tried to train on. So we have two complementary technologies. So we have the technology, um, but the question is, what is the application? And that it comes from the OEM, and that will help us choose which of these, do we need both of these technologies? Do we need, um, can we pick one of them? Or should we do something in the middle? And what we're going to work on is also trying to sort of um, come from another, say, let, let's pick less structured classes, like parts of people, parts of cars, and um, work with them. Um, again, as I said, future work, we'll try to do the fusion and work on parts of uh, vehicles, yeah, things like that. Thank you. Thank you very much for your interesting presentation.